and a warm welcome to the closing plenary of the SCOPE precursor event, Build the Planet 2023. As we come to the end of an eventful day, full of aesthetic learning, eco-criticism and breakthrough, technological and innovative solutions, we will run short of words to describe the mind-blowing submissions and presentations by all the participating teams. The theme for this cool conference of parties exposition is today for tomorrow. And this brings to mind a few lines I wrote. Give them a voice in their decisions. In a society that barely listens, listen to our students. Let your classroom allow voices to trickle in the system. In our classrooms, we have the brains that will solve the problems of tomorrow. But to give them training means we have to give their neurons a chance to solve problems today. So without much ado, it is my privilege and pleasure to introduce our three keynote speakers and panelists, student advocates and champions of sustainability, trail trailblazers and an inspiration to all of us. Our first keynote speaker is Ms. Kyra Anand. Kyra is a grade nine student at the GEMS Jumeirah College. Her hobbies include performing arts like singing and acting and dancing in the Indian classical art form called Bharatanatyam. Kyra enjoys coding. Additionally, she's also extremely passionate about helping the community, empowering women to lead STEM-centered careers and encouraging everyone to play their part in protecting the planet. Kyra? Imagine a single drop of water falling into a vast ocean, seemingly insignificant in isolation, yet causing ripples that expand far beyond its initial impact. Today, I stand before you, fueled by the unwavering belief that our actions, no matter how small, possesses the power to shape the course of our planet's future. In a world where environmental challenges loom large and hope can sometimes feel fleeting, it is crucial to recognize the immense impact of individual efforts. I want to congratulate all of you of your, um, for your uh, extraordinary efforts towards this mission. Now, you might be wondering why I'm here today. I'm here to share my story, my passion, and my commitment towards sustainability. It all began when I was just five years old, filled with wonder about where our trash goes once we throw it away, why we should turn off the lights, and why do we recycle. As I delved deeper into the concept of sustainability through my education and community, I wondered how I could contribute. That's when I decided to take action by creating my own recycling bin and teaching my parents how to recycle. Today, recycling has become a regular family practice in our household. When I turned eight, my school initiated a competition called the Upcycle Competition. This unique contest challenged participants to create outfits using recycled items. I eagerly participated in this competition for three consecutive years, consistently securing a position among the top three. I crafted my creations using materials such as bottle caps, old newspapers, and plastic cups. In fact, I even gifted the jewelry I made to my friends. In addition to my involvement in the upcycle competition, my sister and I annually utilized our arts and craft skills, and, and, uh, which we sold and um, within our community. The funds we raised were donated to various charities and organizations, including Friends of Earth, in order to contribute to sustainability efforts. This year, we decided to expand our initiative and um, expand our impact and launched an initiative called Give, Giving, Impacting, Volunteering and Elevating. Within this initiative, we organized three beach cleanups with a total of 30 dedicated volunteers. We successfully collected 12 kilograms of trash from beaches across Dubai in just three hours total. Astonishingly, 90% of this waste compromised cigarette butts alone. But why did I undertake these endeavors? A few years ago, I stumbled upon news articles depicting a turtle with a plastic straw lodged in its nose and countless whales being washed up on shore, their bodies being burdened by plastic debris. Witnessing these heart-wrenching scenes stirred deep emotions within me, leading to me question, how could I make a difference? I educated my parents about recycling. We established a composting pit and we implemented various other sustainable practices. 
While these actions may seem small in the grand scheme of things, they serve as powerful reminders of the impact that each and every one of us can make. There is strong evidence that a single drop of effort, when combined with the actions of others, can create waves of change that extend far beyond our imagination. I stand inspired by your accomplishments, but let's not stop here. Raise awareness, inspire, advocate, and innovate. Together, we can create a sustainable world where future generations can thrive. Let's embark on this journey together. Thank you. Thank you, Kyra. That was truly inspiring. Our second keynote speaker is Master Sarang Pillai. Sarang is a great and student at the GEMS Our Own High School Boys Alwarka and describes himself as a passionate environmentalist and space enthusiast. Sarang? Ladies and gentlemen, teachers and fellow students, my name is Sarang Pillai. And today, I stand before you to talk about an issue of utmost importance, sustainability. But wait, before I begin, let me ask you this. What really is sustainability? Is it sacrificing our needs to protect our planet? Well, no, of course not. Sustainability is not just a buzzword. It is a way of life that ensures the well-being of our planet and the future generations. It encompasses two main aspects environmental conservation, and social responsibility. By addressing these aspects, we can create a harmonious balance between our needs and the needs of our future generations. Now allow me to share with you all today what we at our own high school Dubai are doing towards sustainability. At our own, we have four pillars which constitute the base for all environmental activities. These four pillars are recycling, conservation, biodiversity, and innovation. Coming to our first pillar, recycling in our own is conducted through various collection drives in which students actively participate. Students collect plastic, paper, aluminum cans, mobile phones, which they deposit in the school. Agencies such as Emirates Environmental Group organize campaigns where the school further deposits its collections. Conservation. Our own has always believed in conservation as a very fundamental commodity to preserving the Earth's resources, and henceforth, we have implemented the energy-efficient litter-free classroom to reduce energy consumption and make our classrooms litter-free. We also conduct cleanup drives and paperless day, amongst numerous others. Biodiversity. Addressing biodiversity and conserving it has always been our focus in our school. We have done so by introducing two special gardens. Our medicinal garden has a wide variety of plants where each of their scientific name, along with their medicinal value, are illustrated to bring awareness among our students. The newest addition is our indigenous garden, where we have planted 51 native plants of the United Arab Emirates, commemorating the 51st National Day. We also conducted the United Action Biodiversity Conference, where 14 different schools came and shared their best environmental activities. They brainstormed and came up with their innovative ideas, which can be implemented in their schools in the following three months. This was assessed in the UAB part two. Our last pillar, innovation. Innovation is a practical implementation of our ideas and at our own, we don't let any ideas go untapped. Students participate in external training workshops to learn how to innovate and get a global outlook. This is followed by external competitions where our students apply their polished skills to the best use. We also conducted the fourth edition of Ecophilia, where students had been given the opportunity to share their innovative ideas through various competitions. Well, you might be thinking now, what's my role in all of this? I am a lead of our school's environmental club, and we ensure that all these mentioned programs and activities run smoothly with maximum participation. Together, we can create a ripple effect of change that will resonate far beyond our classrooms. In conclusion, sustainability is not an option. It is a necessity. We must embrace this mindset and take concrete actions to protect our planet and promote social responsibilities. Let us be the generation that stands up for what is right, that leads by example, 
and the paves the way for a sustainable future. The time to act is now, and the power is in our hands. Thank you. Tarang, your journey in environmental leadership is nothing short of brilliance. Our final keynote speaker is Ms. Hana Bint Mohammed Sunir. Hana is in grade seven, and she is the GEMS Global Student Ambassador of the GEMS Legacy School. She is the school's student voice of sustainability and environmental technology. Hana is not only passionate about helping the environment, but also its inhabitants. She hopes to achieve her dream of becoming a doctor while fostering values of empathy and compassion. Hannah? The greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. None of us present here can deny the fact that our planet is in danger due to our reckless actions, deforestation, Waste generation, burning fossil fuels, industrial processes, and urbanization are just a few that we can tick off from a huge list. As a student leader from GEMS Legacy School, I can confidently say that my teachers and mentors have provided opportunities for me to not only participate and commit to teacher-led sustainability initiatives, but also take part and lead student plant initiatives as well. My sustainability journey started in the fourth grade. My mentors encouraged me to participate in various initiatives, which sparked my passion for sustainability-centered activities. I started off with planting trees every Monday as part of Monday for Mother Earth. I spread awareness on the effects of climate change through social media posts and events hosted by my school. I participated in various plant -a legacy sessions as well. My active participation and enthusiasm in sustainability led me to receiving the Sheikha Fatima Bint Mubarak Award for showing values of academic excellence and global citizenship. Along with that, I'm proud to say that I represent my school as the Student GEMS Global Ambassador, which provides me a platform to engage and interact with my peers as we all collaborate and work together to strive towards making a difference. Being a member of the GGA, I am provided various opportunities to participate in initiatives such as plogging or beach cleanups, streamability, inter-school conferences and competitions, UNCC courses and workshops, and so much more. I also took part in Design Engineer Construct, where we brought in principles of construction and designing to create an educational institute that brings students together for a climate change education, connecting with the pillars of STREAM. This project was presented in Harriet Ward to the Dean, professors, and industry leaders. I also presented this project at the Big Five exhibition and was the youngest speaker in history of this construction event. As we move forward, let us keep in mind that sustainability is not a destination we can reach. Instead, it is the journey of sustainability that keeps our planet one for the future, generations as well. My vision for the future is to continue doing what I do now, I wish to continue working towards a better, safer, more eco-friendly community for all, and I slowly take steps towards achieving this goal. I wish, to take, I wish to see a world where climate change does not have to be considered an issue, a world where greenhouse gases are just enough to keep Earth warm, not boiling. So let us come together and appreciate all that Earth has provided us and do our part for our planet. Together, we can create a world where nature thrives, communities flourish, and the beauty of our planet endures. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Your story is really inspiring. Our moderator for the panel discussion is Mrs. Asha Alexander, Principal and CEO of GEMS Legacy School. Mrs. Alexander is the first UN certified climate change principal in the United Arab Emirates and the executive leader of climate change at GEMS Education. She has made presentations at COP25 and numerous other international webinars and conferences and has conducted workshops on leadership and change management for several schools in India and the UAE. She has led the GEMS Global Ambassador Society and its outreach training program, investing more than 10 schools as international hub schools for sustainability, which enables teachers, students, and schools to develop 
partnerships with more schools around the world to embed the sustainable development goals. I now hand over to you, Mrs. Asha Alexander. Thank you, Ranjini. It's indeed a pleasure to be with all of you this afternoon. And very excited to be moderating a panel with three of the youngsters you just heard, Kaira, Sarang, and Hana. I'm really impressed by your contributions to your schools and to the wider community. And I'm sure our audience who are listening to us would want to know a lot more about how several aspects impact climate change. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. I will ask one question and pass it on to uh, all three of you so you can all share your views on each of the questions that I'm about to ask. So Kyra, I'll begin with you. Why are increasing numbers of community leaders, activists, academics, and policymakers recognizing the power of the eco arts, eco media, and the environmental humanities? And why are events like SCOPE contributing to comprehensive shifts in behaviors, motivations, and desires of both individual humans and society? Why do you think that's happening? Kyra? Thank you. Increasing numbers of community leaders, activists, academics, and policymakers are recognizing the power of eco arts, eco media, and the environmental humanities along with events like SCOPE because they have the potential to bring about comprehensive shifts in individual and societal behaviors, motivations, and desires. These creative forms of expressions engage people on an emotional and um, an experimental level, enabling them to connect, enabling them to connect with environmental issues in a deeply and um, a deeply personal and meaningful way. By tapping into the power of storytelling, visual arts, music, and other artistic mediums, eco arts and the eco media can inspire empathy, empathy, provoke reflection, and evoke a sense of awe and wonder for the natural world. This emotional connection and shift in perspective can lead to changes in attitude, values, and behaviors towards sustainable living and environmental control. Moreover, events like SCOPE provide platforms for dialogue, collaboration, and exchange of ideas, fostering collective action and amplifying the impact of these creative initiatives. Thank you. I think that's absolutely well put, Kyra. I think arts has been neglected and it is time we actually utilize the art to bring focus to climate related issues. So I would like to hear from Sarang now about what his thoughts are on this. Yes, so increasing number of community leaders, activists and academics uh, and policy makers are recognizing the power of eco art and eco media for sharing and bringing a wider awareness, such as emotional connection. Through eco arts and eco media and environmental humanities have with the potential to evoke an emotional response and foster a deep connection with nature and environment. Through mediums such as visual arts, literature, film, and storytelling, these disciplines can elicit empathy, compassion, and a sense of wonder. Communicating complex issues. Environmental challenges are often complex and manufactured, making it difficult for the general public to grasp their full implications. Eco art and eco media employ creative and accessible communication techniques to translate complex scientific data and concepts into relatable and engaging narrators. Shifting perspective and values. The power of eco arts and eco media and the environmental humanities lies in the ability to challenge the dominant cultural narratives and reface societal values by presenting alternative perspectives and questioning existing norms and offering the visions of the sustainable futures. These disciplines can encourage individuals and a society at a large to consider their behavior, motivations, and desires. They can foster a shift from autocratic worldview to that recognizes the interconnected and interdependence of humans and the natural world. Moreover, events like SCOPE provides a platform for students to showcase their potential of eco art, eco media, and environmental humanities. Thank you. 
I couldn't agree more because uh, very recently, many of your schools gathered together to create a humongous whale out of discarded plastic. And that had a huge emotional impact on whoever saw it. It was first displayed at the Dubai Boat Show and now is housed at the Green Planet. When you look at the power of art to make people reflect on uh, a, a mammal like a whale drowning in a sea of plastic, it, is, it has a huge impact on the viewers. So I think you've rightly put it, the creative aspect in visual arts and eco media help people reflect deeply on these issues and are they moved to do something about it. Hannah, what are your thoughts on this? In my opinion, art and media have always influenced humans, whether as an individual or society. Uh, I'm sure we can all agree that art has the ability to evoke strong emotions. People use various forms of visual art, music, and movies to bring out feelings and emotions that has the ability to change one's perspective on how they view climate change. Various schools urge students to connect their pieces of art to climate change to convey a message on the negative effects of it. GLF, as Ma'am had mentioned earlier, recently created a huge model of a whale as well. This conveys a message on how we spend so many hours on a model just to show how oceans and whales are being affected by climate change. Art is not the only thing that evokes strong emotions, however. Public events can do this as well. Events like SCOPE provide an opportunity for people to truly understand and appreciate the significance of climate action and the efforts that go into making it possible. This can also urge the general public towards working towards a greater cause that can positively impact our community and the generations to come. You've actually put it together very well. I think definitely art has to play a huge role in our schools in making sure that our students connect to the need to save our planet. And whether it is the fine arts or the performing arts, they're indeed very powerful media to reach out not only to your school community, but to the wider public. That brings me to my next question. To I shall begin with Sarang. Sarang, for the first time in history, majority of human beings now live in cities and towns, as you can see here in the UAE and in your home countries. How do you think urbanization of humanity might impact ecosystems and affect our capacity to address environmental challenges in the future? Yeah, so the urbanization of humanity has a significant implication for ecosystem and possesses challenges in addressing environmental issues. For example, habitat loss. As cities expand, the natural habitats are decreasing, leading to fragmentation and destruction of ecosystem. This loss of habitat can result in decline or extinction of species, disrupt ecological balance, and reduce biodiversity. Pollution. Urban areas are a major, major source of pollution, including air, water, and soil pollution. Increasing industrial activity, transportation emissions, and waste generation in cities can contribute to a degradation of local and regional ecosystems. Pollution can harm the wildlife and water resources and have a determinal effect on human health. The list of negatives will go on, but allow me to share a few solutions for this as well. Sustainable urban planning. Designing cities with a fo focus on sustainability, incorporating green infrastructures, preserving natural spaces, and promoting efficient land, land use. Resource efficiency. Implementing measures to enhance the resource efficiency in areas like energy, water, waste management, and transportation. This includes promoting renewable energy and conservation, uh, water conservation, recycling, and promoting public transport and non-motorized modes of transportation. Thank you. You're absolutely right. I think Abu Dhabi and Dubai are examples of planned cities where, you know, things are being conserved and uh, it's a really green city and it's growing. And with COP28 coming, we can see more initiatives in this direction. We all impact the world we live in and it's our responsibility to make sure that we leave a very small carbon footprint, if at all. So I take this question on to Hannah. Hannah, what are your thoughts on this? 
Um, in recent years, research and statistics show that around more than 2.3 million trees are being cut down annually in India. This loss is not natural. It's unplanned, which leads to huge consequences. Usually, large forest filled areas are cut down to use that area for short term economic gain. However, what many don't realize is that the so called gain never lasts. Soon enough, environmental issues catch up. Depletion of resources results in a sudden increase of prices. Electricity and water end up being rare to find in households as more families end up in poverty. However, in my opinion, Urbanization does not really affect our capacity to address environmental challenges. As more people move to cities, education and literacy rates have gradually increased, which does nothing but shine positive light on the fact that many people have come to know about the disastrous effects of climate change and are now receiving education on climate action and how to go about it. GLS, along with many other schools, have taken climate action and climate education as something that is extremely crucial to know about. Young students start committing themselves to sustainability initiatives that foster values that build empathy and further create hubs of sustainable innovation. These practices stay with them for long and are the small steps that end up inspiring many to do the same. Urbanization and education build empathy and create hubs of sustainable innovation. You're so correct because it has actually inspired the GEMS education corporate leaders and all your schools to ensure now that you're 100% plastic free. All schools, when we return in September, will not have plastic bottles on their premises, and I'm excited about that. Also, we're looking at a massive reduction, and you were talking about cutting down trees, of printing and pay, use of paper in our schools. So these are initiatives when students come to the front and they start taking action, you inspire everyone around you. Kyra, what are your thoughts on this? Thank you. The unprecedented global trend of urbanization, with the majority of people now living in cities and towns, including the UAE and many other countries, has profound implications of ecosystems and our capacity to address environmental challenges. As an urban as urban area um, areas expand, they often in, encroach upon natural habitats, leading to habitat fragmentation, loss of biodiversity, and increased pressure on ecosystems. Urbanization also contributes to pollution, resource consumption, and greenhouse gas emissions. However, cities also present opportunities for innovative solutions. Urban planning can prioritize green spaces, sustainable infrastructure, and efficient resource management, helping to mitigate environmental impacts. Additionally, the concentration of people in cities can foster knowledge sharing, collaboration, and implementation of sustainable practices on a larger scale. By leveraging the resources and expertise available in urban areas, we can address environmental challenges more efficiently and promote sustainable lifestyles and create resilient, livable um, um, cities that harmonize with nature. Thank you. You're right. I think the word is collaborate, what I'm picking up from what you're saying. We in cities who have the education and who know what is to be done, we need to take the effort to spread this across the world. GEMS is doing a wonderful job in educating our students and uh, training with schools around the world. Now, I think it's necessary for more of us to start spreading the word around the world. It is not enough if few pockets of sustainable practice exist. We need to make sure all people around the world are acting simultaneously to save our planet. So that's indeed a very welcoming thought that you spoke about collaboration, because that, I think, is one of the pillars that is going to drive sustainability forward. So, Hannah, I will start this question with you on advocacy. Can you tell me how and why environmental issues are inseparable from social issues? and how social justice concerns have been articulated through the environmental justice system. And what do you think is the role of students in this? Thank you. 
Let's consider environmental issues and social injustice as two sides of the same coin. It's pretty evident that both provoke each other. For example, let's take the countries that are facing gruesome impacts of climate change as compared to the ratio of countries that are releasing more greenhouse gases. Countries like Somalia, Sudan, and Malawi are countries with particularly low emissions per capita, but are countries that are hit hardest by climate change. Countries like Qatar and UAE are known to have high emissions per capita, but do not face direct impacts of climate change. Another injustice that some people face are because of their gender. Women are known to face both direct impacts of climate change as they hugely rely on natural resources and their surroundings and are quite vulnerable to climatic or environmental changes. Many opinions voiced out by women to reduce impacts of climate change go unheard as well due to the already existing societal norms which view women as caregivers and primarily reduce the opportunity for a woman's education or career. Generational injustice exists as well. Recently, as you might know, an organization Carbon Brief stated that children born today will have to emit eight times less than that of their grandparents if we want Earth to not cross the red line of the 1.5 degree temperature limit. These small injustices led people to give up on their progress towards climate action as they decide that the work is that the work they have to put in is too much or the appreciation is too low. The role of students in this is to keep persevering through these discriminations. They're supposed to be the voice of the youth effort to keep climate change under the red line and to further prevent the ex extinction of humanity. They have to stand up for anyone who wants to voice out their opinions, no matter their gender, religion, caste, or creed. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's a blame game that goes on, on who's, who is responsible for the emissions and who is going to solve the problem. We need to make sure that we all are accountable and responsible for the carbon footprints that we're generating. And it's necessary to educate women and to give everyone an equal voice and equal recognition for what they can bring to the table in mitigating climate change. So what are your thoughts on this, Hara? Yeah, so environmental issues and social issues are irrespective because they're deeply interconnected and affect each other in various ways. Environmental problems such as pollution, climate change, and resource depletion often have a disproportionate impact on marginalized communities, including low-income neighborhoods and minority groups. These communities often bear the burden of environmental hazards, living in areas with poor air and water quality, toxic waste sites, are vulnerable to natural disasters. Environmental issues can also have a direct consequence on public health. For instance, air pollution from industrial facilities or vehicular emissions can lead to respiratory problems and other health issues, affecting communities living in close proximity to these sources. Disadvantaged communities may have limited access to healthcare resources and health disparities caused by environmental factors. Environmental justice is a framework that seeks to address the unequal distribution of environmental burdens and benefits, focusing on fair treatment of all people, regardless to their race, income, gender, or social economic status, in environmental policy and decision making. Through environmental justice movement, social justice, social justice concerns have been articulated by advocating for equitable distribution of environmental benefits and burdens, community participation and empowerment, policy reforms, by highlighting the inseparable link between environmental and social links, the environmental justice movement aims to create a more equitable and sustainable future for all communities. Thank you, Sarah. I think climate justice will be one of the careers that will be open to all of you youngsters because climate change doesn't ask uh, who's rich or poor, which country is well to do or which one is weak. It just like the pandemic, it spreads 
without boundaries. So it's uh, neither are the rich protected nor are the poor. And when people are highly disadvantaged, we're going to have climate refugees in our countries. We might be thinking we're safe at the moment, but you might find our borders infiltrated by refugees pouring in from different places because of climate change. And climate just, justice is going to be a, a key area where there will have to be a lot of people who are trained to deliver fair and just solutions to what is happening around us. So definitely, I think we have to be accountable. We have to be aware that right now we may seem to be advantaged and fair and cocooned in where we are, but uh, our actions impact not just us, but across the world. And we mean think we're not responsible for what's happening in another country, but in turn, it's going to come back to us in the form of climate refugees or people who, are, who don't have food who are going to come in to countries where there is food because man is just looking to survive. So justice is a very, very key area and it must be addressed. And these are professions that are going to arise in the future. And I'm sure we might have a few people here who might be interested in exploring that. Kaira, what are your thoughts on this? Absolutely. Um, environmental issues and social issues are inseparable because environmental challenges disproportionately impact marginalized communities and existing social inequalities. The environmental justice system has articulated social justice concerns by recognizing the dis, uh, disproportionate exposure of vulnerable communities to environmental hazards, advocating for equity in decision making and challenging systematic environmental racism. Environmental justice um, acknowledges that environmental and degradation and pollution are not isolated problems, but are deeply interconnected with issues such as race, class, and health disparities. Students play a crucial role for advocating for environmental and social justice. As future leaders, they have the power to raise awareness, mobilize their peers, engage in activism, and drive meaningful change. By participating in campaigns, organizing events, and supporting grassroots initiatives, students can amplify the voices of marginalized communities, demand policy reforms, and promote a more equitable and sustainable future for not only their generation, but future generations later. Thank you. Very rightly put, uh, Kyra. That brings me to the question of how far can sustainability education in schools translate into practice? What are the, some of the challenges that you foresee and how will you navigate through these challenges? Uh, can I direct that question to Saran? Yes. So sustainability education in schools has a potential to translate into meaningful practice and create a positive impact on individuals and communities. By instilling knowledge, values, and skills related to sustainability, Schools can empower students to become environmentally friendly and make sustainable choices throughout their lives. However, there are several challenges that may arise in the implementation of sustainable education. Integrating sustainability across subjects, providing teacher training, and managing limited resources after important considerations. Engaging students and fostering behavior change can be challenging, as can addressing cultural and social barriers. To navigate these challenges, schools should develop cross-curriculum frameworks, offer teacher training, seek partnership of resources, provide hands-on learning approaches, and involve parents and the community to promote student-led initiatives. A hostelic approach involving collaboration is a key to trans translating sustainability education into practice. At Arun High School, we have an independent body called the Learning Skills Development Program which inculcates the sustainable development goals to our day-to-day -day curriculum. Overall, addressing these challenges require a hostile approach involving collaboration among educators, students, family, families, and communities. Thank you. And that is happening right now, Saran, with our uh, CEO, Dino Varki's vision of having all our teachers 
trained through the UNCC courses. I'm happy to say that more than 45% of our staff have all been trained as climate literacy teachers. There are 12 schools with more than 60% of teachers who are climate change certified. And I'm hoping the numbers will grow because without upskilling teachers, they cannot give the right kind of education to students. What are your thoughts on this, Kyra? Sustainability education in school has the potential to translate into real world practice and create a generation of environmentally conscious individuals. By integrating sustainability principles into the curriculum, students can develop a deep understanding of environmental challenges, their causes and potential solutions. They can learn about sustainable practices, renewable energy, waste reduction and ecological conservation. However, there are challenges to overcome. Limited resources, outdated curriculum, and resistance to change the, um, and to change can hinder the effective implementation of sustainable education. To navigate these challenges, collaboration among educators, policymakers, and communities is vital. Investment in teacher and vital. Investment in teacher training, curriculum development, and the creation of hands-on learning opportunities can enhance the impact of sustainability education. Engaging students in experimental learning, community projects, and partnerships with environmental organizations can also bridge the gap between theory and practice. Furthermore, fostering a supportive and inclusive learning environment that encourages critical thinking, innovation, and empowerment will empower students to become active participants in sustainable practices beyond the classroom. Thank you. I think there's a point there which I quite liked, which was about changing mindsets. I think that's the hardest thing for teachers and students or anyone to do for that matter. Unless we bring about behavioral changes through education, we cannot hope for real change on the ground. We are all talking about it, but in, in real fact, your learning or your teaching at school should result in changed behaviors which are small but consistent and happens every day. That I think is perhaps the one of the challenges which I think uh, prevents us from using education as the answer to address this very important issue. Uh, may I ask Hannah to uh, conclude this session with her thoughts? Sure. Sustainability education is something that all schools can implement to inspire students to be catalysts for positive change. And as far as a school has enough resources and willing teachers, students, and guardians, they can put sustainability initiatives into practice anytime. However, there are a few challenges. First of all, the school's budget is a huge factor we must consider. If a school does not have enough funds to commit to environmentally friendly extracurricular activities, then it will be difficult unless students and their guardians are willing to pay extra fees or funds to commit to these. That is where the next challenge comes in, where students or parents might not be willing to take part in these initiatives. They might not appreciate that sustainability is something extremely crucial that we should take up for a better community in the future. To navigate these challenges, we have to take up continuous effort to con educate guardians, students, and teachers as well. As a further effort, we have to realize that schools are where most of our primary education comes from. So the least we can do is incorporate sustainability to instill values that push students towards working in harmony for a better, safer, more sustainable community. I couldn't agree more, Hannah. Funding is very, very crucial in every, every aspect, in organizations and all the places. But if we let, if, if we are penny wise and pound foolish, we will not be able to save the earth. It's much like saying, I would rather, you know, not eat nutritious food, but I would pay a doctor uh, five years later when I have a serious illness. If we don't act now, if we don't lay out our money and prioritize for what matters now, we will only be reactive when we are faced with the drastic effort, effects of climate change in the future. So thank you all. It was a wonderful afternoon and I loved listening to all your thoughts. 
and especially on what's the best case scenario for a realistic human response to climate change. Even though we, even if we successfully achieve the Paris Agreement's climate change and we limit the warming to two degrees, I think our world will still be very hard to recognize in the future because I don't think we're doing enough to protect it. So we must decide now what we're going to do to safeguard our future. And according to me, we're not being ambitious enough, not in our schools, not in our countries. We are not taking enough action because climate change is already here and we're seeing its effects and scientists are continuing to warn us about the devastation it's causing in our society. But all we do most often is to sit and talk about what to do. Half of the world's coral reefs have already died in the span of a single generation. We've seen these incredible ecosystems which sustain magical amounts of biodiversity collapse due to human impact. So you need new goals and a vision that can inspire people to demand change. I feel our founder and chairman says, Whatever the question, education is the answer. And I think education is the answer to climate change. And having interacted with you young people, and I have seen your drive and passion to transform the current state of the world, you can make the difference when your voices are incorporated in environmental discussions. And that is what we are going to strive for. We're going to allow your voices to be heard at COP28, and through GEMS education platforms, just spoke. Not just the three of you who are facing me, but the hundreds and thousands of children that belong to the GEMS family and through our GEMS sustainability hub schools around the world. I hope to grow more of these hub schools in the coming year, just to make sure that as a philanthropic outreach, GEMS reaches every single country in the world. Thank you for your time this afternoon. I enjoyed moderating this discussion. Thank you all. Thank you to our panelists and moderator. That was indeed a highly engaging discussion and has given the audience and me a lot to think about. We now come to the most awaited part of the event, the prize distribution ceremony, a platform for us to earnestly recognize and wholeheartedly applaud the efforts of students and contingent leaders who have contributed to this event being so impactful and meaningful. Let us begin with the first event. The right rights. Our second runner-up, we have GEMS, our own English high school girls, Sharjah. First runner-up, GEMS, United Indian School, Abu Dhabi. And our winners for the event of Right Rights in the junior category, the Millennium School, Dubai. Right Rights, the senior category. Second runner-up, we have the Winchester School, Jabal Ali, Dubai. First runner-up, Delhi Public School, Badgam, India. And our winners for Right Rights, senior category, GEMS, our own English high school, Dubai. A huge round of applause. Moving on to our next category. You are what you eat in the junior category. The second runner up, Delhi Public School, Badgam, India. First runner up, we have three schools sharing the same position. GEMS, our own Indian school, Dubai. GEMS, Millennium School, Sharjah. GEMS Westminster School, Sharjah. Our winners for the event, the Winchester School, Jabal Ali, Dubai. Our 
our pals beneath the ocean, sub junior category, the second runner up, Gems Westminster School, Russell Kaimer, Gems Millennium School, Sharjah, two schools sharing the same position. First runner up, Gems Cambridge International, private school, Sharjah, and the winners for the event, Lota World School, Lakeshore Greens, India. Our pals beneath the ocean in the junior category, we have our second runner up, two schools, GEMS, our own Indian school, Dubai, GEMS, Millennium School, Sharjah. The first runner up, GEMS, our own English high school, Dubai, and the winners for the junior category, GEMS United Indian School, Abu Dhabi. Coming up with the senior category of our pals beneath the ocean, Second runner-up shared by two schools, the same position. GEMS, our own English high school, Al Ain. GEMS, United Indian School, Abu Dhabi. Two schools sharing the same position at the first runner-up place. GEMS, our own English high school, Dubai. GEMS, our own high school, Al Warqa, Dubai. Winners in the senior category of our pals beneath the ocean. Lota World School, Lakeshore Greens, India, and GEMS, our own Indian school, Dubai. The Watertopia Junior category, we have the Winchester School, Jabal Ali, Dubai, second runner-up. Our first runners-up are GEMS, Winchester School, Dubai, GEMS, our own Indian school, Dubai, GEMS, Millennium School, Sharjah. Our winners for the event, GEMS, our own English High School Girls, Sharjah. GEMS, United Indian School, Abu Dhabi. In the senior category of Watertopia, the second runners are GEMS, our own English High School, Al Ain. GEMS, our own High School, Al Warqa, Dubai. First runner up, the Millennium School, Dubai. The Westminster School, Dubai. And our winners in the senior category, Watertopia, GEMS, our own Indian school, Dubai. Moving on to home equals planet. In the junior category, our second runner up, GEMS, our own high school, Alwarka, Dubai. First runner up, GEMS, our own English high school girls, Sharjah. And the winners, GEMS, our own Indian school, Dubai. Senior category, second runner up, we have GEMS, our own English high school girls, Sharjah. First runner up, GEMS, Winchester School, Dubai. And the winners, GEMS, Founder School, Al Mizar, Dubai. Congratulations to all the winners. A huge round of applause once again for you all. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to our principal, Mrs. Alexander, and our vice principal, Mrs. Lata Venkateshwar, for your guidance and mentorship. A huge shout out to our esteemed panel of judges. Your valuable feedback will hold the participants in good stead. Props to our keynote speakers for inspiring us to put in the work today for a sustainable existence tomorrow. A round of applause for all the students and their dedicated passion and the contingent leaders without whose enthusiastic participation there would be no scope. Your work and commitment have enriched our educational community. A special mention to Ms. Rahila, Ms. Nupa, Mr. Rajesh, Mr. Nitesh for their unwavering IT and back-end support. Mr. Rajiv, Mr. Anish, Mr. Tony, and Ms. Jilna for meticulously coordinating the logistics of the event. All members of the senior leadership team and our lovely teachers for helping us in the organization of the event and training our students. As we conclude this afternoon's event, let us celebrate the collective spirit of sustainable innovation that defines the GEMS global ambassadors and scope. We look forward to the positive transformation that events like this will bring 
in shaping the future of education. Thank you.